Hi, I'm Vicky, the Governor's Daughter. Over the last month, I've been hand-making so many different Christmas gifts. 12, well, more than 12, in fact, because I had duplicates to make. And when I looked back, most of them were all under five pounds, only took a few hours to make, and I decided to share them with you in case you needed any ideas, you needed to save money, and you needed a last minute gift. And for most of them, I put some free plans together so you can download them now and get started, and just have a rummage around for some scrap wood and tools. But don't let this beast put you off because we won't be using that, we won't need anything really hardcore. Just use what you've got, and all of the projects will have videos to follow below. I'm keeping the hat on because it's just freezing. Now one thing I did right at the end of October was reach out to you but on Instagram about what gifts you'd like me to make and obviously I had to make some for my relatives and one of the things that you suggested was a kitchen stool and around that time I found loads of chairs fly tipped with a table in a ditch and I decided this would be the answer on a budget if anyone was in the same situation apart from with a charity shop finder or an existing chair because not everyone finds these in a ditch. And all I did was drill a hole either side of the front leg, exactly the same position, so I could thread a dowel through, that's a cheap broom handle, and use it to create a pivot step. So not only is it a chair, you can pull it out with your foot and then reach to high places. But obviously you can go that extra mile and paint the whole body except leave the top in a natural wood. A bit like a country farmhouse look. I've got to look at my own YouTube channel to find out which I shared. <laughs> If you've got any friends or family that love to read physical books, not audio books, then something that is really cheap to make and quick are some page thumb holders. Please don't even consider buying a template because all you need to do is fold a piece of paper in half, cut out a shape, draw around it on an off-cut piece of hardwood, drill your thumb hole, cut it out. A lot of people told me as well that they swear by them when they've got arthritis in their hands and it's easy to hold the book open. Number three is perfect for anyone like me who likes a glass of wine and dogs. This is one of my absolute favourites out of all of them because I enjoyed designing it. I started drawing on folded paper, which a lot of these projects were done, and cut everything out on a bandsaw and just use a scrap piece of plywood as well. The other thing I really like is if this doesn't look like your dog, you can easily change the tail, the face, or create it as a different animal. And while I was making it, it even looked like an alligator or crocodile. We've all got to eat, so there's no surprise that you're bound to know a foodie lover in your life. This cookbook stand is a doddle to make. Okay, I didn't bring a cookbook today, but all you have to do is place the book there. This is all made from scrap pieces found lying around, but you don't even have to have it in panels. You could have a solid piece there, you could change the dimensions of this lip, and even paint it to match the person's kitchen. Number five actually started out as a component from a really old chair. And now I think it's quite fancy because it's presenting a bottle of wine and two glasses to form a caddy. Don't forget the bow. But all it is is a piece of wood with a drilled hole in the centre. Let's just take that bow off. And another two holes either side for the glasses and some notches cut out. It doesn't even have to be hardwood. You could stain it, varnish it and just present that as somebody. It just pimps up a cheap-ish bottle of wine. Now a lot of you told me number six was your favourite, which kind of hurt because it was my husband's idea and I told him what a ridiculously disgusting thing to make. <laughs> and then the next day I thought, that's genius! A cat bum bottle opener. Again, another really cheap one to make. I just drew a cat bum shape, cut it out of MDF, drilled some holes in the pores for magnets, added a bottle opener, screwed it to a wall. Oh, and I did add some whiskers for effect. This is going to be sent to a friend anytime soon who has a cat, but you could personalise it with a black and white cat or whatever you like. You know what? I want to make more of these. I think they're just so much fun. For number seven, I've got to go back to some footage because I've given them away. But I showed you how to make some really basic food trays, some serving trays, and that was to treat them as bases for gift hampers, where I would fill them with other goodies, put handles on the sides, and personalise the bottom. You could create a Santa tray, or anything you want. I did mine with a vinyl cutter, and when you've got loads of family members to buy things for, you start questioning whether to pay six to 10 pounds for a wicker basket. So those actually saved me a fortune. For number eight, we're gonna go back to gifts for book lovers. And this is actually one of the cheapest gifts you can make out of all of these. And they're really easy to make personalized bookmarks made out of wood. Not only did I love how cheap they were to make as stocking fillers, the thing I love the most is that you can personalize them for somebody who loves other hobbies, like flowers, nature, fishing, and just draw whatever you want first, and then just go over it with a pyrography pen. And I just use cheap, fancy ribbons. Number nine, you might start to think I've got a drinking problem by now, but I know a lot of people who do like a tipple, and that is a 
Drinko Plinko game board bottle opener. This actually took me quite a bit of tinkering to sort out because there's a few moving parts, but it was by far one of the most enjoyable to make. I've drawn out the beer template for you to download and after cutting that out, I just hammered in a load of nails which have to be in a certain sequence. Mine are one and a quarter inch apart. You could get away with one and a half, but no less than a one and a quarter, things will get stuck and they've got to be zigzagged. Believe it or not, these were all from off cuts and when you open a beer, it just staggers its way down. I love the clinking noise. And then right in the bottom, there's a scoring system and some magnets. I think this is perfect for a man cave, woman cave. Just love it. <laughs> it's about time you made number 10. It's an off cut clock. This was so cheap to make because all I did was cut up an old fence post, cut it into slices, cladded a piece of wood at the back, and then routed a hole for the clock to go through. Then if you wanted, you can personalize with numbers, but you don't have to use squares. You could add slices from a tree trunk. You could paint it, do whatever you want. I just think this would be great in a dad's workshop, a mum's craft room, or vice versa. You get the gist. For number 11, this has to be one of my absolute favorites. And it's ideal for anyone who loves to play guitar or loves to listen to rock and roll. It's my guitar bookends. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you genuinely think this looks like a cut up Fender guitar. And it was actually one of the quickest projects out of all of these to make because I had a template that you can download right now. I drew around it, cut the body of the guitar, but also use a template to create the pick guards. Glued and nailed it all together. And what I think finishes it off nicely as well is the strap button just there. The only things I actually bought were the self-tapping screws and that. I just think this is cool. And I can't wait to give this to my brother for Christmas. Number 12 is for anyone who likes a cuppa. And most of us do, don't we? I've always got to have a coffee near me. This is just superbly off course, but you don't have to do this with hardwood. You could do this with softwood as well. And what I did was go to my local library, had some prints done, but there were laser jet photocopies for my original lino cut prints. I used some Mod Podge to transfer the images straight to the coasters. Now it's very important to go and watch that video because I've got loads of tips and tricks and there's a special photo transfer one that I just did not get on with. I had completely different results, the wrong results in my opinion. You can do this with photos, any prints, with people's names to personalize any of these objects. And I think that would make a great gift, just adding some string around them and a little label just to personalize them. Now, out of all of those, I'd be really interested to know which one inspired you the most. My personal favorites were the, the cat bum bottle opener, the Plinko game, loved that, and the dog and the guitar. I was also very impressed with the Mod Podge technique. And with it only being Friday, it's not too late to make any of them. So if you want to go to any of the tutorials and follow along, grab your free plans, then head over to my 12 Days of Giftmas playlist right now and you'll find what you're looking for. And if I have inspired you to make any of them, please consider tagging me on Instagram because I would genuinely love to see. It really does make my day. Merry Christmas.